six that was reported out was invalid. Is that, is that your considered opinion now? No. 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 So as far as you're concerned, that action stands whether or not the board does anything tonight. I've already stated what my advice was. Well, I, I don't understand what your advice is. Are you starting? Are, are you making a comment? Yes, standing for question, attorney. Okay, what's the second comment? Yes. Um, I'm still not sure. It appeared from what he was saying initially that he has decided there were problems with uh, the action that was reported out on January 6th, and he's recommending that you do a redo at this point, take a mulligan and, and do it again. But it's, now it sounds like he's not saying that there's actually anything wrong with that decision. He's just recommending that you redo it, even though you've already done it and it's already legal. Which, public disability. Yeah, but if you've already taken that action, it's just a waste of time to take it again if you believe the original action. So, Bill, are anyway, you... Anyway, ne next question. Right. <coughs> if, if you decided tonight that you did not want to ratify the action taken, then legally, does Swimsy have to return the 600000 that we gave to the uh, January 7th? Okay, and then the, the comment is, I, I think Mr. Arnone is correct if he, if my interpretation was correct of what he said, in that, was that the actions he took were, the actions taken were wrong. I see no way to get from a meeting that was agendized uh, anticipated lit litigation, initiation of litigation pursuant to subdivision C of the government code. So that's not just a discussion of anticipated litigation. It's uh, Brown Act says, based on existing facts and circumstances, the legislative body of the local agency has decided to initiate or is deciding whether to initiate litigation. I have no idea how you get from there to uh, authorizing 30% of your annual budget. Uh, to a, a private contractor who's running the hospital. I, that's a disconnect. As far as his comment about the exigency of the situation, the Brown Act does allow boards, uh, if uh, an, an issue arises after the posting of the agenda, there is a, a remedy. Uh, the board can take some action in some circumstances that only applies to regular meetings. It does not apply to special meetings. Exigency is not a defense of that action whatsoever. So again, I believe the action is totally illegal. And if you allow it, the, the action from January 6th to stand, um, I, if no one else will, will file a complaint with the district attorney because I believe it, it is patently legal. Sure. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to agree with what Jim and Dan said, but I, I still don't understand. You talked about, Mr. Armoni, about a passion plea. Based on the closed session, it should only be new people in that room. And I'm understanding there was somebody else. So please disclose, was there another party other than the district board and the, and the um, and you? And please be honest, because... I, I already said it. I already said. I already answered this question. I said that the parties who had the information necessary for the board to conduct its closed session business were attending the closed session, okay, so which is perfectly allowable under the Brown Act. But the, those who are necessary to be able to give the board the data that it needs to make the determination of whether or not litigation should be initiated because of a breach of contract are, are appropriate attendees to the meeting. And okay, I would, so add, to that, I would add to that, Michelle, that uh, they were only there long enough to give the information. They did not participate in any discussion. Okay, but that information is not recorded in the recorded minutes anywhere. So you basically um, approved 600000 You basically cut the check a day later, I think, something like that. And then you reported the minutes, and it was only because there was a lot of people that were looking at the agenda that really said somebody's been caught doing something probably not so right. My recommendation to this district board is to reconsider the services of this legal counsel because I think that you're not getting what you are paying for. Okay. Anybody else wish to speak? John? You know, a while back, I was at a meeting in the Greenville Firehouse. Some of you were there. And you promised the people out there that there would be no cost to them to operate this hospital. Tonight we hear 40 some percent of your revenue comes from that area. <laughs> now, I don't hear anybody saying 40 percent of the money you're going to get on this vote that you hear are going to provide for programs 
on the lower <coughs> river. Why? Why is that 40 plus percent? I actually agree with people in the audience, including Jim. Um, do, I, do I have to get down on don't. Whether, whether or not you have legal rights to do something in a closed session, you should absolutely avoid doing so whenever possible. I know. If, <laughs> if, sorry. hear me out. I'm sorry. Let's be respectful. If it's a matter that the public should and needs to weigh in on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can, I want to tell you my own personal experience. I sat in board meetings at times, uh, in closed sessions, and had to say, I'm going to leave the room if this discussion continues, because this is really something that should happen in open session in front of the public. So, but you didn't say it that night. <laughs> 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 right?